So what would you rather hear? Would you rather hear the truth? Or would you rather hear something that sounds good to your ears, but it ain't true? Someone said the truth. And that answer, it shouldn't be a difficult one, should it? You see, personally, I much rather know the truth. Because if I know the truth and if I'm doing wrong, I can make corrections and I can live for the better from those corrections. By knowing the truth, in other words, I can live my life without worry, without stress. So therefore, I can live with peace of mind. I can live with peace of heart. I tell you today, I can live for the better. As I have said for two months now, living with my heart at ease, living with my heart at rest, living with my heart at peace, that is me. I don't know about you, but that is me living my best. And I desire for all of you to live your best. I desire all of you to live for the better. So ask yourself today, could you truly live for the better if you chose to live a lie? if you chose to fool yourself and live that way. So all you said, no, for, for several years, it, it took me time to learn this lesson. I had to learn this lesson the hard way for several years. I lived a lie. I fooled myself. I did it with my blood pressure. I knew that high blood pressure ran in my family. And I knew myself that I had high blood pressure, but I choose, I chose to ignore it. You know, I exercise, you know, and I chose to, Hey, I'm exercising. I ain't nothing happened yet. So I must be all right. But you know, the thing about the truth, when you align to yourself, the truth, it has a nasty habit of catching up with you. For a little bit, you can be sprinting, you can be running, you can be out running the truth, D. But the truth, it has a habit of reaching out and grabbing on to you and tugging you back. That's what the truth did to me. It reached out, it grabbed me, and it pulled me back and said, where you think you're going, fella? And I ended up having kidney failure. And I ended up having to go through five years of dialysis because I chose to live a lie and because I chose to fool myself. So from my personal experience, I would tell you that living a lie, it is foolish. Living a lie is the foolish thing to do. And it can be grave if you chose to live a lie. See, it ain't good for your health. It's not good for your health physically. It's not good for your health mentally. It's not good for your health emotionally. And I tell you, it's certainly not good for your health spiritually if you choose to live a lie. So since it's not good to live a lie, someone somewhere may be wondering right now, well, preacher, what is the truth so that I may live by it? Tell me, preacher. What is the truth so that I can live by the truth? All right. All right. Let's talk about it today. Come on. Come on. As I've said in the past, there are subjective truths and there are objective truths. Mm -hmm. In other words, there are truths that are based on your opinions. And then there are truths that are based on proven. And I use our quotes there for a reason mm -hmm. on proven research. Yeah. And the thing about these truths is that these truths, they often change. You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. They often change because the truths that are based on opinions, well, our opinions, they guess what? They often change. Right. Your opinion, what it was yesterday, it may not be the same today. So therefore your truth based on that opinion, it probably changed. Mm -hmm. And the thing about research is that we're always researching. Yeah, yeah. And so researching, we began to learn something new that may dispute the truth that we thought was proven at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So research can change proven truths. Mm -hmm. 
Now, spiritually speaking, there will always be arguments over the truth. What is the truth? But we are of a faith that believes in the divine truth. That is the truth that has been given to us by the Lord, our God, through his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Let us remember that Christ, the only begotten son of God, let us remember that what he spoke, what he taught, what he preached, that it was by the father's authority. Mm -hmm. What he said were the words of the father. Mm -hmm. So what he taught, what he preached. It again was the divine truth that was given to the world, that was given to mankind by the Lord, our God, through the son, the only begotten son of God, God, the father, then God, the son now relayed to us through God, the Holy Spirit. So what truth has been shared with us today? Again, someone may be wondering. Well, the truth, Jesus said, was that we have dwelt in the bondage of sin due to our disobedience. Mm -hmm. Our disobedience of not keeping to the Lord's instructions that he gave to us. Mm -hmm. By living in disobedience, we mankind, we chose to live out of the harmony of God. However, By the truth that Jesus gave to us and that is relayed to us by the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. we have learned today that the Lord has offered to us a way of correction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the truth, you and I, we have a means to correct the wrongs that we have lived in. Jesus said that should we believe in him, should we correct our ways, should we repent? Mm -hmm. Jesus said that we will not perish, but that we will what? Have everlasting, eternal, as you all said, we will have eternal life. That is the truth that we believe in. Do you believe in John 316 today? Do you believe in the divine truth? Do you live by this truth? So over this entire series, I have shared with you the divine truth in the hopes that you would heed this truth in the hopes that you will live by this truth with the hope that you will choose to live for the better. Yeah, yeah. Those that heed this truth, those that live by this truth, I tell you today that they will indeed live for the better. Mm -hmm. You see, when we heed the word of God, we end up living blessed lives. We end up living lives where we are blessed and where we are highly favored in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. You see, when we are living by the word of God, when we are living by the truth, when we are blessed and when we are highly favored by the Lord, we live with God's comfort. Mm -hmm. We live with the Lord's love and we learn and we now know that he will carry us through all of our trials and through all of our tribulations, all because we have chosen to live by the truth. So ultimately, when we live by the truth, God, he makes us happy, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. The Lord, he makes us content in our hearts, that is, in our soul. And I tell you that there are no riches that are of this world that are greater than this blessing. Do you hear me today? Mm -hmm. There are no riches of this world that is greater than being blessed and highly favored by the Lord because You have chosen to live by the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the honest truth is that though I say this, the divine truth, it has many enemies. The divine truth, it has many that oppose it. The divine truth, it has many that will speak against it. 
See, many, they don't believe that they need the Lord in order to live for the better. And because you have chosen to live by the divine truth, they will oppose you. They will argue against you just as they oppose the Lord, just as they argue against God, just as they fight against the Lord today. Will you be one of the ones that choose to give in and heed their word? Or will you be one of the ones that choose not to give in, that choose not to heed their word? Because you will choose to live by the word of God. That is, you will choose to live by the truth. Which one will you do? Again, do you really believe that you can live for the better if you choose to live by a lie. Come on, come on. Here in his second letter today, mm-hmm. we will see that Peter, he both desired and he encouraged believers, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson this morning from the first chapter, mm-hmm. he desired believers to live by the truth, mm-hmm. to live by the word of God. Yeah. yeah. In the 16th verse of the first chapter of second Peter, Mm -hmm. he testified that he and others, he said that they did not follow cunningly devised fables. He said that they were eyewitnesses of the majesty of Christ. So Peter, he was saying that what he had to share was not something that he was making up. He wasn't, in other words, telling them a tale. Peter, he wanted his readers to know that what he was sharing with them was the truth. The truth that he had witnessed with his own eyes. And again, that truth that he had witnessed with his own eyes, it was Jesus Christ. It was the divine truth that came down from eternity, that came down from heaven and dwelt among mankind. Now, something that is seen throughout New Testament scripture is the same thing that we see Peter doing there in the first chapter of his second letter. Where writers, they they essentially had to state that they were eyewitnesses of Christ. You see, time and time again in his letters, you'll see where Paul had to state that his witness was, again, as a servant of Jesus Christ. In his letters and in his gospel, you'll see where John, he essentially did the same exact thing where he stated that, again, he was an eyewitness, where he was a personal witness, where he personally followed Christ, that he was not making up what he was sharing with those that would read his letters and those that he would teach to and those that he would preach to, those that he would minister to. Question, have you ever wondered why they had to do this in their writings? Have you ever given consideration to that? Have you ever given thought to why Paul or why Peter or why John had to say, hey, I, I, I was actually there mm-hmm. with, the, uh, with Peter and John, where they would say, hey, I was there to witness it. Right. And, and where Paul would have to say, hey, Christ talked to me. Mm-hmm. Have you ever wondered why they had to do Come that? On. On. Well, when we look at the second chapter of second Peter and in the first verse, we'll actually see Peter give us a reason as to why he had and why others had to do that. Mm -hmm. Peter, he states there in that first verse, if you're looking at it, he said, there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. Mm -hmm. False teachers Mm -hmm. who Peter said will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the Lord. False teachers. Peter was concerned about them, wasn't he? He was concerned about false teachers and the doctrines that they would share. The doctrines of lies. 
that they would share and that they had already began to to spread Mm -hmm. around him and those who were around him as well. The major concern was that apostates, those that would deliberately choose to live in sin, they would go about and they would spread their doctrine of lies and those who had turned away from those lies, Mm -hmm. that they may heed those lies as if those lies were the truth. You see, Peter, he didn't want any believers to heed those lies. Mm -hmm. Peter, he did not want any believers to live by those lies. He did not want them to be encouraged by false teachers. Mm -hmm. So in this first verse, Peter, he was speaking to Christians, specifically he was speaking to Jewish Christians here. We will see that he reminded them of the trouble that was brought upon their people, his people, due to the lies of false prophets. You see, the false prophets, they had encouraged the children of Israel to continue to live in wickedness, to continue to live by lies. You know, as the saying goes, the many of them rejoiced in living in those lies. And so they were choosing to live blissfully in their ignorance. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is bliss. And many of them, again, they were glad to live in their ignorance. So as Peter reminded the Jewish Christians of those false prophets, I believe that we can learn something today from what happens Mm -hmm. when you choose to heed the lies when you choose to heed the doctrines of false prophets, or in other words, false teachers. In first Kings, the 22nd chapter, specifically the first through the 23rd verse, if you want to write that down so that you can read it later, we take a look at Ahab, old King Ahab, who I believe is one of the best examples of people in scripture that chose to live a lie and, (laughs) He foolishly rejoiced in in doing it. In in that chapter of first Kings, we'll see where Israel and Judah, they were deciding whether or not they were going to fight Syria over some land that once belonged to them. Mm -hmm. And in that chapter, we'll see where Jehoshaphat had came to Ahab Mm -hmm. and Jehoshaphat. He was a man who was of faith. He was one of the good Kings of Judah. He truly and genuinely believed in the Lord. And and when he came to Ahab and he heard what Ahab was up to and what Ahab desired to do, Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat, he said, well, let us consult the Lord. Go in and get a prophet and let us hear from God about what we should do in this matter. You know, that's that's the first thing that we should do when it comes to the decisions that we have to make in our life. When there are our choices that we have to make, the, the first thing that we should do is not consult our friends and not even consult our family. They, they, they should be secondary. The first thing that we should do if we want to, to go the right way All right. is we should consult the Lord. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what Jehoshaphat, that's what he desired to do. But Ahab, he was a wicked one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He never cared for the Lord. We, we know this one. We, we go back to Elijah. We, we know how old Ahab was. So he got some prophets, but they weren't prophets of the Lord. Scripture tells us that he went out and he, he brought in 400 prophets. Yes, sir. 400 false prophets. And, and, and when he when he consulted them, they spoke on behalf of the Lord. And let me use air quotes there. I was trying to use air quotes there. They spoke on behalf of God. Imagine that. And what, what do you imagine they said they have? Well, scripture tells us that they said they have. Hey, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good to do what you want to do. All right. The Lord has blessed it mm-hmm. and, and the land will be yours. That's what scripture says. 
And, and when Jehoshaphat heard this, he, he knew right away that something wasn't right. And, and, and scripture tells us that, that he looked at Ahab and, and it says there in the scripture that he said, hey, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? Jehoshaphat wanted to hear from God to know the right and the proper way to go to make the decision that was not only best for him, but the decision that was best for all the people. He desired to live for the better. And so he wanted to consult the Lord. But if you look at scripture, Ahab, he had a, an answer for Jehoshaphat's question there. In the eighth verse of that 22nd chapter of first Kings, Ahab answered Jehoshaphat. He said that he still had one prophet of the Lord. But the thing is, Ahab said, I don't like him much. All right. He didn't stop there. Ahab flat out said, I hate him. All right. <laughs> I hate him because what he has to say is never anything good. It's never anything good about what I want to do. It's never anything good about me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ahab didn't want to hear from God. All right. He was living wickedly. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens when, when you're not living in a way that pleases the Lord. Mm -hmm. God going to get on you. <laughs> he going to get on you. Mm -hmm. He going to flat out tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. Ahab, he didn't want to hear the truth. All right. He was one of those that just wanted to hear something that was pleasing to his ears, something that sounded good. And I tell you today that it ain't always good to simply hear what you like to hear. All right. Did you hear that? Yeah. It ain't always good to hear what you like to hear. I tell you, one who loves to, to live a lie is one who always wants to be lied to. Those lies, they sound like music to their ears. <laughs> people like this, they will always put people before them that will tell them exactly what they want to hear. That will say words that they will agree to. And I tell you that again, when you are one of those people, you are choosing to live a lie. And that ain't healthy for you. And Ahab was one that enjoyed being lied to because it made him feel good about himself. He always felt like he was in the right and he was doing good. All right. However, as is the case, as I said, the truth, it reached out and it grabbed a hold of him. The truth, it, it caught up with him in the race. You can't outrun the truth. And he ended up foolishly losing his life to Syria as he chose to heed the lies of those false prophets. This is one of the many cautionary testimonies that we find in scripture that confirms what the proverb states when the proverb said, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it's in is the way of death. If you choose to live like a fool, Guess what? You're going to die like a fool. And that's just me telling you what scripture backs up. Listen to me again. When I say that, just because something may seem right, just because something may sound right, doesn't mean that it is the truth. It don't make it right. Many have been deceived because something seemed right or because something felt right. They got a good feeling about something. Yeah, yeah. I want you to understand today that those feelings uh -huh. can deceive you and what you see can deceive you as well. All right, Don't be fooled. Learn to consult the Lord. The Lord ain't going to fool you. And yes, I use the word ain't there. <laughs> God ain't going to fool you. You see, I get it. Nobody likes to hear from the Lord because the Lord is going to tell them the truth. And like I said in, in one of my sermons in this series, nobody likes to hear the truth. Nobody likes to be rebuked. 
I get that. Yet I tell you, even though the truth hurts, we aren't little children, are we? Are you a child? I got some no sirs there, and I heard no as well. Yeah, why the truth may hurt, I want to remind you what Jesus said about the truth. The truth will make you free. Like I said, the truth, even though it may hurt, we can make corrections when we're doing wrong. And it can alleviate those worries and those burdens that we may have had, those fears that we may have had when we receive that truth. And see, I tell you today that I much rather live in the liberty of God's truth than to live a lie, than to live in a lie of false doctrines. Among us, we, we must understand that there are false teachers with a false doctrine that they will certainly preach and they'll preach it like it is the gospel. But again, there is no truth that is in their gospel. They believe their doctrine of lies to be the truth. But again, it's in is destruction and we must not heed their words. So we must recognize the false teachers. We must recognize their doctrine of lies so that we do not end up giving heed to them, their lies, so that we do not end up being destroyed like all of those who in Old Testament days gave heed to all of the lies of the false prophets. So Peter is concerned about false teachers and their doctrines. I want you to understand that it is one that was shared with other apostles. It was shared by them and it was shared by others who was ministering the good news in that day and age as well. If you take a look at the gospels, you will see that this was also a concern that was shared by Christ as well. Jesus, he was so concerned about false teachers that he warned, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. That's what Jesus said. If Jesus was concerned about false teachers and their doctrines, we should be equally, if not more concerned about false teachers and their doctrines as well. So I want to take a moment here today in my sermon to focus on the apostates, those false teachers. I want to focus in on their characteristics so that we aren't fooled by them, so that we are not led astray by their doctrine of lies. All right. Now, from what Jesus said there in his warning that we can find in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, we are told the most significant characteristic, I believe, of the false teacher. Jesus, he again, he warned that the false prophets, the false teachers, that they will dress up and that they will come as sheep of Jesus's flock. But in their heart, Jesus said that they are not one of his. They are not one of his sheep. Now, somebody may wonder, well, preacher, well, what's so significant about that warning, that statement that came from Jesus? I would tell you that what's significant about that statement to me is the fact that they were able to get close to Jesus's flock. All right. All right. To me, the fact that false teachers are able to work their way into the flock of Christ, to me, that is very scary. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about that. All right. One who has a doctrine of lies, the, the fact that they are able to get close to you, it is very scary to me not only does it scare me, it is also a danger, a very present danger that all of us believers that we face today. Somebody, somebody may wonder, well, why is that so scary, preacher? Well, in his epistle, in his first epistle, John said that those who do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he said that they are not of God. In the third verse, the fourth chapter of 1 John, if you want to see it for yourself, John said that they are of the spirit of the Antichrist. All right. Again, I tell you, that's scary to me. That shows you how dangerous the 
false teacher is. You see, this raises the most frightening question to me. And that question is this. How could someone that is of the spirit of the Antichrist nestle their way into the flock of Christ and get so close to us? How could they nestle their way in and get so close to you? Let's pay attention to what John stated in the second chapter of first John. In the second chapter, John, he stated in the 19th verse about the false teacher there. He said, they went out from us. The us there being followers of Christ. He said, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, this part is the scary part. John said they would have continued with us, but they went out. The false teachers in John's day, they were of the assembly of Christ. They were there in the assembly of Christ. They had heard the message of Christ. Therefore they had received the truth of God. They identified themselves as Christians as believers. They identified themselves as followers of Christ, but they chose to forsake the assembly. They chose to forsake Christ. Therefore they chose to forsake the truth. A reminder for you, the devil is a fallen angel. As the devil fell from heaven, some have fallen from the faith of God. And they have gone out into the world just as the devil, (laughs) deceiving all of those that are around them. Mm -hmm. Let us also note, so that you are aware of this, false teachers, if you did not catch it, they know the truth. Did you hear that? False teachers, I want you to understand today. Don't think that they're ignorant Mm -hmm. of the truth. They know the truth. Mm -hmm. See, this was a very somber statement that that John was making here. I believe John saw some going around and preaching a message that was denying living by the truth, living by the way of Christ Mm -hmm. that once he saw sitting in the congregation. Did you hear that? Maybe you know some that, that were with you. They came up in the church with you that today are out and about proudly denying the Lord. There are many false teachers in the world today that were brought up with all of us that learned the word of God but they now choose to oppose the word of God. Does that scare you? That, that, that not only scares me, but it, it hurts me. All right. I feel bad for them. They know the truth, but they are choosing to deny the truth. They're choosing not to live by the truth. They're choosing to live a lie. Scripture tells us that false teachers will scoff at the truth and that they will mock the truth as they, again, they are choosing to live according to their own truth. You see, it is one thing to deny the truth when you are ignorant of the truth, when you're lacking in knowledge of the truth, but it is a completely different ball game when you know the truth and you're choosing to ignore it, when you're choosing to deny it, when you're choosing to reject the truth. See, false teachers, they are incredibly dangerous because they have knowledge. They have the knowledge to be able to pull the wool over our eyes, over your eyes. And if you do not recognize them right away, they will have led you astray. 
They will have led you to living a lie. And again, we know the end destruction of living a lie. Again, consider Satan's temptation of Christ and how he attempted to use knowledge of the truth to twist it and to corrupt the truth to Christ. Guess what the false teacher is doing in the world today with knowledge of the truth. They're trying to bend the truth. They're trying to twist the truth and they will come to you with a corrupted truth to deceive you, to argue with you, to try to encourage and to to try to persuade you away from Christ. Don't let them do that to you. Live by the truth today. In our key verse, we'll see that Peter stated that false teachers will speak with great swelling words that allure through the lust of the flesh. Oh, them false teachers, they happen to be good speakers, don't they? They are eloquent speakers. They, they can charm you. I can't charm you when I speak because I'm going to speak the truth to you. And again, the truth hurts. But those false teachers, oh man, those false teachers, they can butter you up. You know what I mean by that? They can make you feel real good about what they saying. Remember, their goal is to persuade you. Their goal is to, to again, encourage you to live by the same lie that they have chosen to live by. You don't need God in order to have fun. You don't need God in order to be happy. You don't need God in order to live for the better. You can live the way that I'm living. I'm happy. Look at me. Look at all that I got. If you live like I do, you can have it. They will make you feel good about the way that they have chosen to live. Peter, he again, he stated there in the 17th verse that these false teachers, these apostates, they are like wells without water. You know, imagine you out in the desert and you see a well. That well would, would be hope. If you haven't had water in a long time and you run up to that well and, and you're trying to pull water out of that well, but you ain't pulling up nothing because there's no water in the well. That's what a false teacher is like. They are wills, but again, there ain't no hope that's in that will. Yes, their words will please those that desire to live to fulfill the lust of their flesh. However, their words will do nothing to profit your soul. Peter stated that they will promise liberty to you. They will promise freedom to you. But what kind of liberty, what kind of freedom can they promise in their lives? The devil, he promised Jesus worldly riches in his temptation. False teachers again will promise you the same. And they will say that you can again have more fun if you if you live like them. That's their promise. But the truth of the matter is that the promise of false teachers are of nothing. As Peter said, emptiness, their freedom is a freedom from righteousness. And I tell you today that you don't want to be free from righteousness. You see, I much rather live in the bondage of righteousness. I much rather live in the bondage of righteousness than to ever live in the shackles of sin again. I don't want to live under the rule of sin. I want to live under the rule of my God. I want to live under his grace. I don't know about you today, but I much rather live by the truth than to ever live by a lie. You see, I desire to live for the better and the truth that comes from the God from God gives me that better. You see, when you live by the truth, when you live by Christ, we have learned and we know today that burdens are eased. 
We know today that we overcome. We are again our testimonies of those who overcome their afflictions today. We know that we overcome our afflictions, our infirmities, our trials, and our tribulations. Again, I say to you today that there are no greater riches than having God by me and being able to persevere, being able to endure all things that life can throw at me, all things that the world throws at me, all things that the devil himself throws at me. There ain't nothing better than it than being able to look the devil in his eyes and say, I continue to make it. No matter how much you challenge me, no matter how much you try to pull me down, I make it. Again, I much rather live by the truth and what has been promised to me by Christ than the premises of one who don't know anything. The premises of one who has chosen to fool themselves. Jesus said that we will recognize false teachers by their fruit. And Jehoshaphat, he certainly did, didn't he? He discerned the lies of the false prophets because their words were empty. Like Jehoshaphat, we can easily recognize those that share false doctrine today. Because again, their words are of the world. Mm -hmm. They are of emptiness. They do not satisfy our soul. As John said in this epistle, we cannot believe every spirit there is. In the fourth chapter and in the first verse, you've heard me quote this scripture before, but I'll quote it again. We must try the spirits. We must test the spirits by the spirit that dwells in us so that we can know whether or not they are of the Lord, our God. You see, those spirits that are of the Lord, those spirits that are living by the word of God, they will share a word with you that will help you when you need help. They will lift you up when you are in need of being lifted up and they will encourage you to go in the way that is proper in the way that is right. They will encourage you to live for the better. See, again, simply put, some of us have grown too stubborn to actually heed the truth. And so we will only listen to what sounds good to us, but that ain't any good for us. Some of us, we have become too gullible and we'll listen to anything. And that again, that ain't healthy for you as well. If you're going to listen to anything, if you truly desire to live for the better, live by the word of God. Live by the truth. Proverbs tells us that the simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. I tell you today that we ought to consider the times that we live in. You know, I tell you today that we ought to caution ourselves, that we ought to be prudent in our every step. We ought to be prudent in what we listen to and what we read. And we ought to ask ourselves, is it uplifting our soul? Is it uplifting our spirit? Is it the divine truth? Is it giving us rest? We must not heed the voice of those that deny the way of the Lord. We must not heed lies. We must not heed empty words, empty promises. See, should you choose to live a lie, you're making a choice that puts you at odds with God. And you will not be blessed and you will not be favored by him. So again, I encourage you today, live by his word so that you can enjoy his favor. And when you enjoy his favor, you will be blessed. And when you are blessed, I tell you today, that you are truly living for the better. And I tell you, you will live your best life. Amen. 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 Amen.